Uh, my name is John Muldowney, and I'm the head of the Agriculture and Environmental Structures Division down in Johnston Castle in Wexford. And we're delighted to be here tonight. I have colleagues here with me and the chair of the Women in Agriculture Stakeholder Group, just to give a short introduction to the things that are made available within TAMS 3. Uh, we've been launching various sub-schemes of TAMS since the 22nd of February, which started with the solar scheme. And now we've progressed through and uh, the last sub-scheme to be launched is the, the Women Farmers Capital Investment Scheme, which allows for a 20% top up to investment items um, that are available for capital investment. The TAMS itself, it's a very significant, I suppose, supplement to help, uh, I suppose, support farmers in their move to more sustainable farming practice, that everything that we have in the list um, we believe contributes to providing for environmental improvement at farm level or to improve animal welfare at farm level. And it's a great move that we have as well to allow for this 20% top up for women farmers again to help that structural reorientation within the farming system for what women can add to the farming business itself. We know that women have been doing a lot on farms over over the years so this is an important recognition in that regard so we have Mona who'll give a bit of an overview on that after that then we'll have Robert who'll give an overview of the scheme itself and then I have colleagues that are joining as well from uh, the TAM section uh, Dermot Grogan, Brian Fleming and Parik Ryan will join to assist in the Q&A section later on and in regard to the Q&A section itself um, there's a question and answer tab that's on your screen. So for any questions you have, please insert them there and we'll try and coordinate responses to those at the end of the presentation. So overall, I think we should be about 25 or 30 minutes maybe going through the presentation and then we'll have a half an hour more in terms of questions and answers. We'll see how we're going at that point. Okay, so I'll just pass over to Mona O'Donoghue-Concannon and she'll just give a bit of a reflection from the Women in Agriculture Stakeholder Group. Thanks, Mona. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Mona Dunhukan Cannon. I'm the chair of the Women in Agriculture Stakeholders Group. Our group is a our group was a great group because it was a unique group set up from the main farm organizations, namely MACRA, IFA, ICMSA, ICSA, ICOS, the Irish Organic Society, INHFA. The Irish grain growers all working together for a common goal. This common goal was recognition and research for women in farming and basically to get the recognition that has been there for all the years previous. Our initial involvement was to submit a CAP proposal and this was done and we are grateful to the department for recognising our uh, submission and also to, to Europe for taking on board this and promoting gender equality in Ireland. Um, we are very happy and encouraged at how it has been taken on board. And tonight we encourage everyone to listen and to take on board what is available and to make use of this um, for everyone in the future. Tonight I encourage everyone to ask as many questions as possible and to engage throughout the event. Also, we are also encouraging people to engage with us after tonight. We're available on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and we are there to answer any questions. Together, we can make a bright future for farming, for everyone, family farming, but especially women in farming. And we want to just create a platform where all voices are heard, male and female, together, working together for a brighter future because we feel that farming is a future and it is working together like we have in the past that we will bring everyone together. And we're delighted to be asked here tonight. And again, thank you very much. And look us up on social media and go forward. We, we would hopefully, this would be only a starting point and that we would work with different initiatives to bring to the department because we are delighted that they have taken on board so far and working into the future this will be the first of a stepping stone so thank you very much and we will um, look forward to more engagement in the future thanks very much mona uh, robert over to you now with the presentation thank you john good evening so uh, my name is dr yeah. robert Leonard, um, with the department of agriculture i'm just going to go through 
an introduction to the Women Farmer Scheme, going through just some of the background, um, the terms and, and some of the main eligibility criteria and what's in the scheme. Um, overall, um, TAMS 3, just as a general background, so, um, is the new capital investment schemes and they're to run from now until 2027. Um, in the development of the TAMS 3, there was a full review of all the investments from TAMS 2 undertaken. Um, and the terms and conditions have been updated and revised for all the, scheme, all the schemes to conform, conform with the new CAP strategic plan. So there's been a lot of um, changes and work done to make sure they meet the requirements. Um, as part of the CAP strategic plan, all the investments, they have to have either climate, environmental, animal welfare, health and safety benefits to them. So it was, there must have been some positive outcome or benefits for any investments to be included in TAMS 3. So it's just, it wasn't a case of whatever was necessary, but it must have met one of these four elements um, fully to actually be included. Um, under TAMS 3, um, for those of you who mightn't be familiar with it, there are 10 schemes. Um, there's the Women Farmer Scheme, which we're going to go through this evening. And then there is um, nine other schemes which have been launched. There's the Farm Safety Scheme, the Solar Scheme, the low emission slurry spreading scheme and the organic scheme. Those three, four schemes are also all at 60%. Um, and with the farm safety scheme, so scheme, the and, and the low emission slurry spreading scheme, the investments are dedicated to those schemes. Um, so you have to apply through those schemes rather than the main schemes. Then you also have the young farm capital investment scheme, pig and poultry scheme, the animal welfare and nutrient storage scheme, tillage scheme and a dairy equipment scheme. So there's a broad range of different investment schemes there. Um, just as a general, for all schemes, the scheme ceilings have been reset for all applicants. So any expenditure under TAMS 2, it um, doesn't come off any scheme ceiling. So you have the full new investment ceiling. And under TAMS 3, the investment ceiling has been increased to 90,000 euros for all schemes. That's with the exception of the pig and poultry scheme and the less scheme. The less remains at 40,000 as it did under TAMS 2, and the pig and poultry scheme has been increased to 500,000 euro. The partnership ceiling remains at 160,000 for all schemes. And so it is not um, a doubling up from the 90,000 um, as in TAMS 2, but rather it's remained at 160,000. And there's individual scheme ceilings for less and so on. So any expenditure under less or solar does not come out of the scheme ceilings, the scheme ceilings for the other schemes. Um, so that so you have effectively a ninety thousand under the women farmer scheme, ninety thousand under the solar scheme, and a forty thousand euro investment under less um, for, for investments on, on your holdings. Um, as John said, the first scheme opened back in February. Um, and the remaining schemes uh, have been opened on a phase basis since then. Um, and hopefully the Women Farmer Scheme will open shortly. Um, the first tranche of this time is expected to close on the 30th of June, so just under two weeks from now. So getting into the elements of the Women Farmer Scheme, it's been put together to give enhanced support to start or expand businesses for uh, women in agriculture. There would be a 60% grant rate, so increased from the 40% uh, onto the animal welfare scheme to 60% for women farmers. There's a 90,000 euro investment ceiling and 160,000 euro for registered farm partnerships. Um, what should be remembered, I suppose, is that joint ventures are only at the 90,000. They're not partnerships. They're considered individuals as are companies, they will be considered individuals and they're also at the 90,000 euro ceiling. So it's only the registered farm partnerships of 160,000 euro ceiling. Um, the women who elig to be eligible must be um, a female registered as female on the department's CCM system as the corporate customer management system. and must be aged between 18 and 66. So that is up to your 67th birthday. So from from being 18 up to, to 66. Um, then also, in terms of actual educational requirements, um, if you are actually established as um, on the farm, on the holding in 2022, so that you'd be on the BPS 
and as part of the actual business, then there is no education requirements. However, if you join the holding after 2022, you must have a, meet the educational certificates. So that means you must effectively have the green cert um, to actually be able to apply if you are not already previously on the holding. So if you're part of the business in 2022, um, you'd be registered part your name on the herd number um, or, or as a company director for companies and that, that is, brings in the requirements. I suppose it, it, there is a requirement to have the, that control of the holding um, as it would be similar to young farmers. I suppose there is a, where you're farming in a partnership or as part of a company, um, you have to sign a declaration to confirm that you actually do have control, control of the holding, joint control of the holding. So that, that is important. If you are actually farming in your own right, the declaration isn't needed. Um, but it's just there where you are farming as a partnership or as a part of a company. And where there is inspections, um, if you get those, there will also be a questionnaire to verify um, that you are actually have that control. Um, so what investments are included under the Women Farmer Scheme? Uh, all the investments in the Animal Welfare Scheme, um, plus the equine investments and the tillage investments, and dairy equipment investments and some of the pig and poultry investments. So what you're looking at is animal housing, um, bovine, sheep, um, all um, calf housing, silage pits, slurry storage. Um, so I suppose what in terms of slurry storage, it's, it's very much the same as the animal welfare scheme. You need to actually make sure to actually be eligible for animal housing slurry storage and certain other investments, you must make sure you have the full, you meet the minimum requirements at present. Um, under the, it is as with TAMS 2, you are, we could not grant aid someone who did not already meet the legal minimum requirements, but we can provide the additional storage, but not, but you must have meet the legal minimum requirements to apply for slurry storage, animal housing, size for its efforts of nutrient producing um, structures or nutrient holding structures. Also, in the scheme, you have um, farm fencing, that's sheep fencing, bovine fencing, underpasses under public roads, um, farm roads, equine facilities, um, automatic drafting facilities, um, milking equipment, milking machines. Um, I suppose with the milking machines, just as, as with the dairy equipment scheme, um, the, the ap applicants can apply for up to 10 milking units. Um, under the scheme, and with, but they must it must have less than 120 cows on average over the last 12 over the last 12 months, um, and that so that is the same as the dairy equipment scheme. There isn't any increase on the number above 120 for partnerships, the partnerships are, or individuals. It's 120 cows on average over the previous over the last calendar year. Um, so it's the same as the dairy equipment scheme, and um, for the organic scheme. There is a range of pasture management equipment also in the scheme, such as soil aerators um, and mulchers in there, and the full range of tillage equipment is in all the investments um, to, for as you will be in the tillage scheme. So as to be eligible for those tillage investments, it is a requirement to actually have um, a minimum of 15 hectares of tillage land um, declared of eligible crops, and they are detailed Will be detailed the terms and conditions. It's the same uh, crops as required given under the tillage scheme. So if you're actually want to find them out, it's just look at the tillage um, investment scheme, and you'll see the crop list there. It'll be the, the under the women farmer scheme. It'll be the very same list of investments. Um, so that's a run through. Just also just to be aware with the farm safety scheme. Um, the safety, all the safety investments are now in, in the dedicated farm safety scheme. So if you're looking for animal handling facilities, replacement slats, and um, covering an existing tank, that is to be applied for under the farm safety scheme rather than in the women farmer scheme. So that um, then at that point you don't have the requirement the same way. So once you are a farmer with a minimum of five hectares, then you are will be eligible for. Um, the women fa for the farm safety scheme elements. So any 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 applicant there can get six percent for the farm safety schemes, 
of the investment ceiling 90,000 as the same part of the same investment ceiling as would be used on the women farmer scheme. Um, just the other schemes, just quickly go through them. The solar, less and organic scheme, all at 60% grant rate. Um, must apply through the actual relevant scheme for the investments in, in those schemes. Um, the, the solar panels are only in the solar scheme. Less equipment is only in the less scheme. And there are certain organic, only investments in the organic scheme. So you need to be an organic farmer for those. There's also the young farmer scheme. Um, it's 60% grant rate for young farmers. Um, I suppose one thing to think about with the, um, and I suppose to say the qualifying young women farmers may play through either the young farmer scheme or the women farmer scheme, whichever they so choose. Um, the set the, is an identical range of investments in the two schemes. Um, just to highlight when we're on that, the where there's a registered farm partnership involving a qualifying young farmer and a woman farmer, um, it, it's important to remember that they must be applied through the women farmer capital investment scheme to get the 60% on the full 160,000 partnership ceiling. Um, if, you're, if you have a young farmer and woman farmer and they apply in the young farmer scheme, it'll only, the 60% will be only paid on the first 90,000 and 40% on the remaining balance. So if you want 60% where you have a qualifying um, woman farmer and a qualifying um, young farmer, then it must apply through the women farmer capital investment scheme. And then, as I said earlier, the solar and less schemes have separate investment ceilings, so that, that is additional funding there for them. Also, then, there's the pig and poultry scheme, um, for animal welfare scheme, tillage and dairy equipment scheme, which are open to all farmers. The grant rate on those schemes is all is 40%, and there's a 90,000 euro investment ceiling for all those schemes, except the pig and poultry, which is a 500,000 euro ceiling. So um, the animal welfare scheme, just so just to be familiar with it, just in case it's open to any woman up 66 years or over, or any woman of any up from 18 up, and there's a 40% grant rate, 90,000 euro ceiling, and again very similar investments down up to the women farmer scheme, but it doesn't include the tillage investments, dairy investments, or other, some other ones um, in it. So it's just a more limited range of investments. Um, I suppose just to highlight it, the equines um, for any women who are actually thinking of applying for equine investments, it's important that the equine census has been completed in the Women Farmer Scheme or in the Animal Welfare Scheme, and that the herd number has been activated for equines, and that there is an equine premises registration number. That you have a minimum of three equines recorded on the last census. That um, applies for the Women Farmer Scheme as well as the Animal Welfare Scheme and the young farmer scheme. So if you're looking for equines, it's important that the census is completed and you have a, um, the herd numbers activated for equines. The application process, for any of you who are familiar with TAMS 2, it's a very, a very similar process. Um, it will operate in tranches. The first tranche expects to close on the 30th of June, as I said, um, under TAMS 2. The second tranche opens straight afterwards and we don't yet have the date for the second tranche um, but that will hopefully be announced in due course and um, so to get system access if you don't already have so um it's to access it is through agtrue.ie um as you've been used to under tams anyone who has applied under tams too so if you don't already have access through to agtrue.ie it's important to actually go on if you go on to agtrue.ie you'll see the links there um, it will tell you how to actually get, get access onto it, to uh, set up access for it. And you can either apply yourself as an applicant or have a, an agent apply on your behalf. If you're having an agent apply on behalf, they need to actually, uh, you need to set up, um, get them linked to yourself so that you'll be linked to the agent so they can actually do that. There are forms for the agent to submit to actually do that. Let me see here. The actual application, the login page, and for anyone who's used to it, so it's the same as it was, and you can register and they for it if you if you have not done so. Um, 
the common errors if you don't have access to it online the client or agent association is not in place at the time of application um, so it's just to make sure you have that the association in place um, so if you are want an agent to do it fill in get the form filled in and submit it um, companies not having an individual link to the time of application um, I suppose it's important um, for the women farmer scheme that the one of the company directors is actually um, marked as female on the CCM system. Um, if there is no linked um, gender for any of the actual directors, then they, you will not be eligible. So it is important to make sure there is one person um, marked as female for companies. And um, the applicant details, that's important to make sure that they are correct. You check that they are correct on the time through screen. Um, before applying and if you're actually making any change of a, a entity so if you're going from an individual to a partnership or an individual into a company is to make sure you contact the department of Johnstown Castle to uh, make sure the details are if they're not correct to actually get the details updated so this will be your typical access screen if you're you'd be familiar with it from times two you can see the times three systems there um, for the different schemes you're eligible to apply for and the women pharma scheme will come up there as well and they're in a, in alphabetical order they will be in alphabetical order so um, you can see there may be more than one page um, of actual applications so we just move on to the next one to bring up the, the women farmers one once it becomes out becomes live so when you actually go in you click in for a new application new scheme you will see your net your um, client name, address, phone number, make sure they are correct when um, they're coming up um, and then just click the new scheme application and then when you go into this ta into the system you have a number of links, you have declarations to complete, the application details and production units and your proposed investments then alternative contacts. So in the proposed investments you have an add investment tab, you just select it and you can add in the relevant investments. We'll work through a full list, we'll come up with all the main investments, and then you can add in the sub investments. You can see here this one being completed up with proposed investments fully done. Yeah, and this is an equine application. Um, you can see the date of the application um, is where it's submitted. Um, and then you, what you do is put, you select your main investment, the sub-investment, putting in the relevant dimensions, um, fill in the relevant boxes for whether it's one or two dimensions. Um, it will automatically calculate the proposed quantities and the reference costs. You will also need to put in a proposed reference cost um, for the actual main investment works. Anyone who's done the TAMS 2 will be used to that. Um, for certain investments such as animal housing, slurry storage, you'll need to put in um, the nutrient production. So specify whether animals are housed, outwintered, or a combination of both. And then numbers of animals in the, um, that are, if they're outwintered, you have to give the parcels where they're being outwintered. Whereas if they're all housed, it's, you provide, um, it's, it then uses that to calculate the slurry storage. So that then, once you put in the nutrient production, it's the nutrient storage elements. So you put in the details of all the different storage facilities. Um, you have to put in, be it they are covered stores, um, rectangular covered stores or whatever shape, or circular stores, you have a selection of options to select from, put in the dimensions, and you will work out the quantities and the capacity of the actual stores. And this is to enable us to make sure whether or not um, that you have sufficient slurry storage on the holding. It also looks for areas of un uncovered at surface yards where livestock are kept and areas where soil water is produced. So it's just a matter of work through those and fill them in, which is the same as for the animal welfare scheme and would have been in place in TAMS too. Um, once that's done, so once that once you have all the investments in, we then click on you can validate the app, save the draft, and then validate it. And if they, that, when it's, you click on validate, it actually checks to see whether there are any issues with the actual application. If there are any issues, they you'll get warnings coming up 
and uh, include detail what the issues are and what you need to actually to do to adjust it. You can see here, um, and so it will tell you if there's any, any any missing information before you can actually then go on and submit the application. So you, as you save as you're working through, you can save it. Then you can validate it to check for errors, and then once you're happy with the application, you've uploaded all the relevant documents. You then submit the application. Once you submit applica your application, you can't then unsubmit it. So that is it finalized. So make sure before you submit, you've gone through all the documentation, you have it right, you have your drawings uploaded, planning permission, the other, um, any other relevant documents that is looking for as you work through it. And just some information to note. So the data set up, this is the data of requesting of registering a department identifier. So if you were on, say, set up with a herd number in 2020, that would be the register set of data set up. Um, so this is, I suppose, more so for um, young farmers than anyone else. Um, for, uh, for other farmers, for young farmers, it's got verifying that you are there in 2022, but not um, anything else. Um, but if you're a young farmer, you must be within the five years. Um, also, if you have any, any doubt or any issues with that, again, contact Johnson Castle to verify um, what you have there. Also, um, it should be noted that where, if you have a partnership and that is dissolved, it's important to contact the partnership registration se section in, in Dublin to make sure um, that the department is aware that it is dissolved because it will impact on any payments under the TAMS scheme. Um, if we're not notified, then there will be potentially requirements for recruitment if a partnership was dissolved and there are payments made when they weren't eligible. So we do need to make sure where partnerships are formed or dissolved that you make sure the department is properly informed on that. Um, it is possible um, or under TAMS 2 and once TAMS 3 is up and running fully, um, to request change, some changes for um, sub-investments after submission of an application. Present, um, the time series system is not fully developed yet, so that's not currently available, but it will become available um, probably from after tranche two um, as, as it actually develops through. Planning, um, it's important to note that full planning permission must be granted at time of submission of an application. So it's not just the grant of application, but the full and final planning permission must be granted at time of application. Then you must submit it, copies of the planning documents with the actual as part of the application. So the system will look for them. And it's important to make sure you do submit the full, the actual grant of permission, not the decision to grant. They're two different documents. Um, so and also you will need to submit the conditions, um, the drawings. And the, it's important, to, and the drawings you submit are actually stamped by the local authority. Um, if they're not, the drawings, the drawings are not stamped by the local authority. That will cause an issue and will be queried. Um, if the decision to, if you do not submit the final full and final planning commission, or do not have it at time of uh, of the closing of the tranche, then you will have to wait till the next tranche, because it is a requirement um, to have the full and final planning commission at time of application. Um, company documents, if you're actually a company, make sure you submit the company registration certificates and the memorandum and articles of association need to be submitted along with that um, and make sure they are actually signed and where necessary the change of director or secretary details are submitted. Um, issues have arisen from these documents not being submitted or signed correctly so and they are checked and gone through so do make sure before submitting them they are actually correct. You have actually and do submit the relevant documents if you are a company in a company situation. Um, also, just make sure you upload the documents under the correct headings. Um, the EG to make sure the education documents are uploaded um, correctly on under the education elements um, and the correct certificates and other um, drawings are submitted under the drawings. Maps, they should be 83 sizes smaller. Um, larger maps are not acceptable. Um, so it must be sized when the, on the drawing system to size A3 or smaller. 
and the documents must be 10 megabytes or less in size. That's a significant increase from TAMS2, it was three megabytes. So hopefully that will enable these, make it easier for people to upload drawings. Um, that we were aware a number, of, not quite a frequently larger drawings have to be divided up to actually be submitted. So hopefully that will actually overcome that in a lot of cases. So um, that 10 megabyte size, but do watch for that. Um, when it comes to the payment claims, um, it's important that at, there will be a requirement that um, all applicants submit geotag photographs using the AgriSnap system um, that is currently being developed and be in place time for payment claims. So you need to take a geotag photograph of all the sub-investments that you're actually claiming for. So if you're doing, a, say, uh, an animal house, you must take a picture in the animal house of it so you can see the different types of animal areas, if it be a loose area or cubicle areas, so that you can actually see them or the, and see if it's a slurry tank, the top of the slurry tank, so we can see that the actual investment is there and in place. And to do this, it is going to be, it is a requirement that your farm yard is digitized onto the BIS the application that you made, so if you need to go back and um, digitize that farm yard, do so. Um, it, the BIS is open for doing modifications if needs be because the AgriSnap is linked to, the, to a Lipis parcel, so we'll be linking directly back to your farm yard, so that's where it must be digitized in your BIS application. So, to, um, so hopefully that is done, and then we'll be able to verify that the investment is there. The problem is then, and it is important actually when you're claiming your app, application, making the claim, that the actual, you claim the items purchased and the correct size and dimensions. It's not, um, don't be claiming what was approved if you've actually done something slightly different. So if you have applied for a four base latted house, and you built a three base ladder house, that is okay, just claim on the three base ladder house. Um, similarly, if you built a five base ladder house, you should claim on the five base ladder house, and not the four base, not what was approved. So it's important to claim what was approved. And if you have built something larger, you will need to get planning commission, revise planning, um, to confirm that that is okay, and that will need to be submitted with the application, the claim. So it is possible to make the changes, and again, within the main investments, so if you're making a tillage investment, um, such as a, a, a stubble cultivator, and you actually want to buy a tine cultivator, that isn't the problem. If you're approved for the stubble cultivator, fine. At application state, at claim stage, then just put, put select in a tine cultivator that you actually purchased, and just put in the dimensions of it then there won't be penalties. If you claim something different to what you've actually completed, there will be penalties. But just so the important is claim what has been completed, the correct sizes or dimensions and put in the correct dimension. So it is important you measure up the documents, everything correctly. Also, with payments, um, it's important to remember with, with the claims, higher purchase or lease purchase is not permitted under the TAM system. So you must actually own the investment. If it's under higher purchase or lease purchase, as an applicant, you don't actually own the investment. So that is why, what you, so you need to actually make sure it can, you can use a bank loan, but not a higher purchase or lease purchase element. The receipt must be in your applicant's name, in your name, and um, it's the name on the actual application. So you may be, if you're in a comp company, it's the company would be the applicant. So the receipts must be in the company name must be the same address as on the applicate on the TAMS3 system. Um, so I know quite frequently there can be slight variations in addresses that may be in two different enterprises. You might be not, will have a slightly different address. But so it's to make sure the address you're, they're using is as is on your TAMS application. Um, your fat, any amount fat charge must be showing. The company's fat number, which is must be marked paid stamped, signed, dated, and uh, must be legible, and clear descriptions, including the size and volume and serial numbers where they're relevant. Um, it is also, if you're buying machinery, such as a bulk milk tank, um, trade-in is allowed, um, but it must be like for like, so you can tra trade in a smaller bulk tank, 
um, for a larger bulk tank, and that trading should be shown on the receipt. It's part of the, your payment for it. Um, if there's issue, uh, if you get an inspection, we will be we do check the bank account, so we expect to see the amount that is actually being paid on for the machine coming out of the for the tank coming out of the out of your bank account. Um, with the trade-ins, the trade-ins part of the payment, so it will be shown on the receipt, so we can see that why there will be this like differences. And receipts also with machinery, the most detailed machinery supplied. So it must specify what it is. And it should be as one of the descriptions used from the tap on the investments. So just then a quick review over the main list of application stages that you'll be you'll see. The draft online application recorded. So that's when you've actually initially made an application. Online application finalized, um, so that is actually been submitted. It then goes to ready for HQ checking, so we're actually going to be checking it ready for RAS, which is the which is the, the ranking and selection process. So that is just to actually rank and um, where we have to set where we have a you know sufficient funding to actually fund all investments. It is a ranking, but it, um, so that it will provide a cutoff for those. Um, then it go to ready for local office checking if it has been selected for from RAST and then go through approvals and then online claim submitted local office check is completed approved for payment and what after that goes to payment to accounts and claim paid so hopefully coordinate to work through fairly effectively but that you can see the list of stages that you will see working through the system you can see where it is so you'll know what stage is that after you've actually submitted an application so just to be aware, um, there are new reference costs for all the TAMS3 schemes, and they've been updated um, from TAMS2, and so there's significant increases in most investments. There is also new explanatory notes on the costings for TAMS3. These are updated from the TAMS2. Um, they're an important document for you to read. Um, they set out where to take measurements, how to measure, and um, how to what dimensions to put in for all the different investments. So um, if for if you are putting in a cultivator, it tells you what dimension to actually input um, to the system. And for animal housing, it gives detailed examples of the different measurement points. Um, so if you have a combined cubicle house and slatted house, it sets out all the different points of measurement so you can actually correctly put in the correct measurements to make up the cost of the building. And they they're can be quite daunting to look at initially, but they are carefully divided up into sections. Um, so you can you can do a lot of applications with only reading small portions, but do take the time to read through those explanatory notes, and they do help you to actually complete the application. Um, there are also going to be multiple new specifications for the newer investments, some of the tillage equipment, um, however the likes of the animal housing, slurry storage specifications, they're still there, they still apply from the same ones that applied in times two, apply again for times three. They're all available on the department website uh, at the TAMS section, um, TAMS3. So if you go on to www.gov.ie, you'll be able to actually access um, all the specifications and the costings and the terms conditions. Um, so the, just to go through the usual, so under TAMS3 documents, you have, um, there will be a TAMS3 frequently asked questions document. There's explanatory notes on costings, the TAMS3 reference cost document, um, that if you want to actually calculate how, what the reference costs for the investments are going to be, and um, you don't actually need it to actually complete an application reference cost document, but you do need the explanatory notes on costings documents. It'll also be a computer user manual, all the terms, conditions, the marking sheets, and then there's some equa some of the reference costs they have equations as the, um, to calculate them. There's a spreadsheet there for you actually to use if you want to work those reference costs out. And there's also samples of the tank costing spreadsheets on the website. So here's the just you can see they got the times three or times two on the times right, and then the building specifications. And if you go into the times three system, you've the tap you've a link there for all the the, tap, the list of all of the invaluable items by scheme. It goes through them all in detail, and then you've the times three support documents, and then each of the scheme schemes themselves so and once the women farm scheme becomes available that will come up there on at the end of the list 
So if you have any technics or general for just once the scheme's up and running the technical queries, then you submit any technical queries to terms at agriculture.gov.ie. Um, admin or application queries go to oh, just uh, if you phone Johnstown on 053 916 If it's contractors tax clearance, they must submit the tax clearance details to Tams contractors at agriculture.gov.ie. That's come up more at the payment stage. Their contractors must have their tax clearance submitted and they must be tax compliant. So do make sure any contractors you're you're getting to do work are tax compliant. And the target is to reply to queries in 10 working days. Um, with large backlogs, it can extend sometimes, but we do endeavour to get to reply to queries as quickly as possible. So thank you for your attention. Um, and if uh, hopefully any questions you've submitted into the questions tab, and we can start working through them.